how to keep track of LinkedIn outreach without going crazy. So I just made this video for a friend and I figured that I would share it with everybody else because this is one of the biggest questions I get asked when somebody wants to implement a LinkedIn strategy is, okay, but how do I even go about keeping track of the new people that are connecting with me, who I've sent messages to, who still needs to receive a message, and then all of the follow-up in between. And so I shared with them kind of these benchmark numbers that we shoot for in terms of connection acceptance rate, response rates, positive response rates, and ultimately meetings booked. And this was kind of overwhelming, which is surprising to me to them because they didn't even know how to track these numbers in the first place. So what we're going to go over in this video is how to keep track of not only new connections coming in, but overall leads in your market, who needs to receive messages, who needs to receive follow up so nobody falls through the cracks. And then we'll go through some benchmark numbers of how to see success on LinkedIn and actually have an impact on creating a successful LinkedIn outreach strategy. So that's kind of the cadence that we're going to go through. And let's hop into that. So you'll need LinkedIn Sales Navigator for this. It is worth every penny that you spend on Sales Navigator, not only for the ability to keep track of new connections, messages, new leads coming in, but also for the fact to be able to do really great searches. And LinkedIn has a lot of issues as well, but being able to filter for the most active people on LinkedIn, which I'll show you in a moment, is how you basically 300% increase your results from what most people do on LinkedIn. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to build out some lead filters and lead lists. So with that being said, stick with me while I create these and go along and create them with me. And then I'll go in to show you how these actually will make your life a million times easier. So the first list I'm going to make is connection request sent one. And so the reason why I'm numbering them is you can actually only add a thousand people to each of these lists. So just being preemptive and making three of these to begin with keeps it easy for everyone. Then I'm going to create a message sent and I'm actually going to do it by month. So right now it's August, 2024. So August, 2024 messages sent. And I'll just do it for the next three months to keep it easy. So September and then October. All right. I'll go ahead and make a responded, a follow up, and then an exclusions list. So these are the list, the lead lists that you need to make. And you can make these really quickly like you just saw in Sales Navigator. And then we can take these over into a lead search that then we can save. So this is going to make your life a lot easier. So instead of making it so, you know, the same leads are kind of populating over and over again, and you have to figure out who you sent connection requests to, who you sent messages to, I'm going to show you the filters in this saved search to make this really, really easy. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to go ahead and as a blanket, all my saved leads, I'm going to just exclude those people. So anybody that's saved as a lead will not show up in my searches moving forward. I'm also going to exclude anybody that I've already sent a message to. And this is going to get rid of a lot of people. So that's good for me because I don't want to have to sift through and duplicate work. Then I'm also going to make this be just a second and third degree connection list. So I want this to just be people that I'm going to send connection requests to. And so the next thing I'm going to do is add in a geography. If I want to, I can add in an industry. So let me just go ahead and I'll add in, let's just do technology, information, and the internet. And of course, LinkedIn's going to bug out on that, but hopefully we'll be able to get this back up and running. So then I'm going to add in some current job titles. And so current job titles, let's just say I want to target chief revenue officers. So chief revenue officer. And I'm actually going to just put it in Boolean. So it has to be that exact phrase. So chief revenue officer. And I'm not going to put in CRO just because you have to get chief risk officer and other people with those titles um, kind of out of the mix. So I'm pretty happy with this search. You know, I could put in some company headcount numbers. So let's just say I want to do, you know, up to a thousand. So I don't want super small companies, but I'll do 11 to a thousand. Um, just for sake of example. And that's a really good way to filter out revenue. Um, there's some issues with the revenue filters that exist on every platform, but I like using headcount kind of as a precursor for that. 
So what this is going to do now, this saved search will automatically populate with new people as they kind of come and go. So you can see there's 1500 people here. The number one filter that you should add on here is going to be this posted on LinkedIn in the last 30 days. So that takes it from 1500 down to 514, but this is going to make it. So I'm targeting the most active people and I'm actually going to get about a 300% increase, not only in new connections, but also in responses once I ultimately send out messages. This is a great skeleton though, to create a saved search on LinkedIn. And you just have to do this once and then you save it, obviously. Um, and let me go ahead and do that. And so I like to title it a send connection requests. So I am going to filter on this little trigger and actually I need to delete a saved search just because I have too many. So let's go back. I'll get rid of the pharmacy one. So now I should have room because you can only have 50 saved searches. All right. So now that I have this saved search, I'm going to come in here and aim it, name it, send connection requests. And I'll add another S just because I've, I've done this a couple times already. So now I have this list that I can come back to every single day when I come into work, assuming that these filters are right. And the best saved searches are going to be ones that are simplistic, but also leverage this active targeting. So now, you know, when I come into work every day, and I want to send my connection requests on LinkedIn, it's as easy as going to this a send connection requests in my saved searches. And just for what this looks like, then what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to save all of these leads to those lists that I made earlier. So connection requests sent one, and then so on and so forth. So let me go ahead and add it to that connection request sent list. And I have a bunch as you can see. So I'll add them there. So now what I can do is I can go down the line and send these connection requests. And so I won't do it for everybody, but there's 25 people on a page. And the goal is going to be to send 50 connection requests a day to get to 200 connection requests a week and blank connection requests will give you a higher connection acceptance rate than sending a message in there. And really what it comes down to is what works in cold outreach is so much about pivoting and doing different strategies than what most people are doing. And since so many bots and automation use what I call the dirty words on LinkedIn. So thanks for connecting. I'd love to add you to my network. Hi, Chris. Hey, Chris. Anytime that a connection request message includes any of those phrases, people's red flag is going to kind of go up and they're going to be a lot less likely to accept that connection request. So with LinkedIn outreach, the first barrier to get over is making that new first degree connection. And so now that I've sent this and I've added them to my lead list called connection request sent, I can actually go and audit this on a regular basis. So now we're going to create our second saved search. So to do that, what I'm going to do is instead of second and third degree connections, I'm just going to do first degree connections. And then I'm actually going to add in this connection request sent list. And I want to add in all of the numbered ones that I had. So connection request sent one connection request sent two, just so we can save this and not have to update it in the future. And then the final thing I'm going to do is exclude anybody that I've sent a message to. So now what this is going to do is as I work through these people and send out messages, they're actually going to be removed from this list entirely, but this is only going to show me my first degree connections that I specifically sent a connection request out to. So the, the goal is to zero this out. And you can see that I have a pretty big backlog just from a message standpoint on my personal account. But the goal is going to be to zero this out on a regular basis. If you have some catch up work to do, I recommend sending 25 to 50 a day. And it makes it really easy to kind of catch up and follow up. But for sake of example, then now you came into work, you sent out your connection requests, and then you go to the second list, which it's not going to let me save it again. But what I'm going to save it as would be this B send messages. So B send messages is going to be your single source of truth of these are the people that you handpicked sent a connection request to, and now they actually accepted that connection request. So you can go ahead and send a message as we send out messages. Since we're excluding people we've sent messages to, they're going to be automatically removed from this list. So it's a really clean system to keep track of everything. And then I'll show you how we can look at the overarching numbers as well. So when you come in and you're going to send out a message, you would go in here and type out whatever message you're going to send or paste in whatever template you think you're going to send and then hit send. And as you do that, you're going to also save them now to that message sent list. So 
the the saved search that we created earlier, the message sent or the August messages sent, August 2024 messages sent, that is the list that you would save everybody to as you send a message out to them. And that's really to be able to keep track of who's received a message, um, but also to be able to do some high level numbers. So message sent example, I'm just gonna save these people too. So let's say that you know we come in and we look at our connection request sent list. So let's just imagine that I sent out 143 connections and 25 of those people connected back with me. So you can do the math, obviously, to get your connection acceptance rate. And based on that, so let's just say that this was my actual numbers, I would be having a 17.5% connection acceptance rate, which isn't great. Um, so in this scenario, I would probably tell somebody that they're probably not targeting the most active people. So the benchmark that we're going to shoot for is going to be a 30 to 40% connection acceptance rate. And the only way that you can even start tracking that is by having these lead lists and saved searches to be able to start working off the numbers. Then as we start getting responses back, that's when we're going to leverage those other lead lists that we created, like responded and then follow up. So the way that I use responded is whenever somebody responds back to a message, whether it's positive, neutral, or negative, I don't care what the sentiment is, I add them to this responded list. And that gives me my total response rate. Then anybody who responds positively gets added to the responded list, but also the follow-up list. And that makes it so I have my positive response rate in there as well. So being able to keep track of all these numbers in a really easy and systematic way without having to leave LinkedIn saves tons of time and makes it so you can actually make decisions on the numbers that you're getting. So as far as response rates go, I like to see at least a 20 to 30% response rate and sometimes even higher than that. If you're not getting that response rate, something's wrong. Either your targeting is off or your messaging is just wrong. You're speaking to the wrong problem. If you want to learn more about messaging, you can check out some of my other videos. And if you're getting any value from this, please consider liking and subscribing to our channel. So as far as positive response rates go, the benchmark that I shoot for this is 15 to 25%. And then ultimately meetings booked, I want at least a 60% meetings booked from positive response rate. And so this was a 90 day calculator. So you can see 48 positive responses, only 22 had booked meetings. Over the course of you know the next 30 days, we booked a lot more of the 26 that hadn't booked. But being able to start tracking these numbers is extremely important to be able to start making decisions on what is working and what isn't working. So hopefully those benchmarks were number were helpful and hopefully building out these lead lists gives you a very clear and easy way to keep track of the work that you're probably already doing on LinkedIn. And at the very least, open your eyes to how much more you can be doing. So the limits that exist on LinkedIn with Sales Navigator is you can send out 200 connection requests per week. Um, and once a week goes by, you kind of miss out on that. So every month you get 800 connection requests split up on a monthly basis. And that number actually resets at Sunday evening, depending on daylight savings time, it switches up by an hour. But Sunday evening, if you're based in the US is when that number resets just for anybody that really wants to, you know, get after it. So if you plan on sending a connection request on a Monday, let's say you could theoretically knock out all 200 and then just send messages for the rest of the week and follow up on your inbox. And that's a really good strategy and a very high value way to leverage the most active LinkedIn users and get the most bang for your buck. Then, you know, there's a million things that you can do as you build up this active audience. Not only are they going to be faster to respond, more likely to engage with content, et cetera, et cetera, but you're actually going to see faster deals move through the pipeline because they're just active on LinkedIn and you have a direct way to get into their inbox without a spam filter. And so making a first degree connection is kind of the first step of any very solid LinkedIn strategy. And hopefully this gives you the tools to be able to do that.